Powerhouse, presented by Alliant Energy. Next to heating and cooling, water heating is the next biggest energy user in your home. Whether you're looking for a water heater for a brand new home or simply to replace a worn out water heater, it pays to do some research. And joining us now to shed some light on water heaters is Jeff Howe with Rude Water Heaters. And Jeff, what's the first thing to consider when picking out a new water heater? Well, the first thing to do is familiarize yourself with the different types of water heaters. Whether it's a tank type water heater, a tankless water heater, or maybe a coil water heater. Now you know you've got some laid out here for us. Let's start with this one, the conventional water heater that we're familiar with. Yeah, this is your standard tank type water heater, the oldest technology around. It's got a standard gravity vent that goes up through the chimney in your house. Uh, your hot water in, or outlet is on the top and your cold water inlet is also on the top. The water is introduced into the tank as you draw it off from a, from a fixture. Energy efficiency of this? Uh, this is probably going to be your lowest efficiency product. Um, there are different ratings on, on these tank style water heaters. Uh, the lowest might be a 0.52, and uh, this one right here is a 0.62, uh, which meets some of the energy rebates in, in some of the markets. Okay, a water heater that catches a lot of people's eyes is the, the tankless water heater. Tell us a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, the tankless water heater is becoming more and more popular because of the energy efficiency out of this unit. This small unit you can hang on the wall, and it's got enough uh, energy to uh, power a whole house uh, uh, from two to three bathrooms at, at one time. Now, I think that's the thing that catches most consumers. They look at this one and see this and say, Jeff, this can do the same as this one? Yeah, it sure can. Um, based on your demand, which is uh, usually rated in gallons per minute, uh, you can run up to two to three showers at the same time with one of these tankless water heaters. How does it work? Well, it introduces gas in through the gas valve, and it has a modulating gas valve in it that ramps up and down based on your demand. It's got a computer inside that makes it a smart water heater, and it, it uh, will take the temperature setting that you've got it set at and the amount of uh, cold water coming in and ramp the gas valve up and down in order to supply what you need. But I guess the thing is, it, it is truly tankless? It is tankless. There's a small heat exchanger inside, and as the water comes through at a very high rate of speed, the burner will ramp up and down in order to heat the water to what you have it requested at. Energy efficiency of this model? This is a 0.82 energy factor, which is the highest energy factor for a gas-rated water heater. Okay. Slide over here to this one. This is a power vent water heater. Uh, these are also very popular in uh, some of the new construction because they're high efficiency. They're able to vent through the sidewall of the house. Uh, some of the new homes use high efficiency furnaces which also vent through the sidewall of the house. So there's no chimney built up through the roof. I guess that's the point. Someone may have a house that doesn't have that chimney and they need to vent it out. This would do it for you. Correct, yeah. You could vent this right through the sidewall of the house with uh, PVC piping. Works similar to the conventional water heater? Correct. You've got the gas valve that brings the gas in. There's a tank inside of here, and that heats the water up as the thermostat calls for, for more hot water. Energy efficiency? Energy efficiency is going to be higher than our standard style tank. Uh, this could be up to a 0.65 or 0.66. Um, it also has the energy guide rating label, which all water heaters come with, uh, and it will show you between the least energy used for this type of water heater to the most energy used, this one falls right in at the bottom there because it's more efficient. It'll also give you the rating on there as far as how many uh, average dollars per year operating cost this unit is. And it also gives you your capacity rating on there for first hour rating of delivery. Over here is a uh, uh, coil that's used in conjunction with a boiler. You might have radiant floor heating in your house and using a boiler to, to heat your floors in your house and this would use that same boiler to, uh, to heat the coil with inside uh, this unit to provide hot water for your showers. Now again, you'd have to have the radiant floor heating to use with this? Yeah, you'd have a boiler in okay. conjunction with this right here. Okay. Energy efficiency of this would be? It would be uh, pretty high because you're using that heat already to heat your home, so it ties it in conjunction with your, with your boiler. And there's a couple other systems as well. Yeah, you might have a solar, solar water heater that uh, gathers the energy from the sun, or you might have a heat pump that uh, uses geothermal or ground source heat water. Okay. What about capacity when we're looking at what water heater to choose? How does that play into it? Well, that's a good question. You know, a lot of times you need to look at the amount of uh, demand that you have within your house, whether you have a two bathroom or a three bathroom house, or maybe if you have a, a whirlpool that's maybe 100 gallons, uh, you might want to look at how much your total demand is. You might get by with just a 50 gallon uh, tank type water heater or you might have to jump up to a 75 gallon water heater based on 
demand and how many people you have in your home. Okay, one of the things that our viewers are always interested in, Jeff, is the cost for a water heater. Uh, I'm sure we run the gamut here. Yes, you start out with your standard uh, vent tank type water heater at the low end of the spectrum and at the uh, top end of the spectrum will be the tankless style water heater. Okay. What about if I'm not ready for a new water heater? I've still got one, but what can I do in terms of uh, making sure that it's running efficiently and, and uh, maximizing the energy efficiency of it? Uh, there's a couple things you could do. First of all, use less hot water. Uh, but if you're unable to do that, you might um, insulate your pipes with, a, uh, with an insulating material. Oh, you've got this here. Yep, you can put this right around the copper tube in your house. It's got an adhesive on it, and that will uh, protect your standby heat loss and make it longer. And that's simple to do. You can put very that on simple, very yeah. easily. Yep. It's got a built-in adhesive on it to insulate the piping. Another thing you can do would be to um, uh, turn your water heater temperature down. Instead of running this at 140, it's maximum temperature, and then cooling it back down at your shower to 108, you might um, set it down to 120, which that for every 10 degrees is a 5% energy savings. Now, what about, uh, Jeff, an insulating blanket uh, for the conventional one? Is that a good thing to do? In the past, it was a real good thing to do because uh, there wasn't as much insulation built into the tank-style water heaters. And uh, up until 2004, and most, most of the manufacturing dates are listed right on the new water heaters, um, at 2004, we had to go to a new technology, which introduced the air in through the side right here. And it's, there's a sticker there that says, do not block that air intake, because uh, it, it'll shut down the unit and void the manufacturer's warranty. Okay, but if you've got a water here pre-2004, the insulating blanket would be a good thing to do. Yeah, as long as you don't take it all the way to the floor to block the air intake uh, on the old style heaters that, where the air came in through the bottom. Well, Jeff, you've given us a lot of great information about water heaters. We all want to make sure we keep that hot water flowing.